Okay, in this video we're going to kind of briefly do an overview of EOSJS because this is what the library you'll be using to create front ends that interact with your smart contract. So essentially what we'll be doing in this video is interacting with the address book smart contract that we deployed uh, back in the ESIO section of the course um, and we'll essentially do the same things we did via command line we'll do on EOSJS. Um, one thing I, I want to call out before we actually start is um, in the developer documentation, if you go up to the top, you'll see an HTTP API. And what this is is just a list of different um, API endpoints that you can hit using curl, and you'll get a response back. Assuming, like, so if you're running uh, Nodios locally, right, you can just hit the, the endpoint locally using this. Uh, URL this port. Um, I didn't show you this previously because I, I don't know, to me it's like a lot of this stuff, most of this stuff, or I, I, I'm pretty sure all of this stuff, uh, you can just get do, like get the same data just running CLIOS. So you don't really need to use the, the curl endpoint. But the curl, what the curl endpoint, or sorry, the HTTP endpoint gives you is the ability to write um, uh, libraries in different languages, right? So, so really, any, any library that can has an HTTP, any language has an HTTP library, where you can uh, do posts and gets. Essentially, you can do you can write a a, a library in that language. Uh, the the most prominent one currently is uh, EOSJS. I know there are a couple other ones people are working on, like Python, Java, those other languages. So. But uh, because the SJS is the most prominent one, uh, we'll stick with that one for the uh, tutorial. Um, I, I'm just going to run Node because <laughs> I, I did a lot of front end development, you know, a, a couple years ago, and, and since I've joined Amazon, I've done absolutely nothing but back end. So my design skills are severely lacking because <laughs> it's been quite a while. Uh, so I'm just going to run Node uh, and then print the things out to the console, but really it should function exactly the same way uh, if you were going to do this in a browser or, or in a mobile uh, a mobile OS if you're using React Native or something like that. Um, so the first thing you need to do is you need to get Node. You can, you can see if you have Node installed uh, by running Node-V and that will tell you which version of Node you're running. Uh, also whether or not you have Node installed. Uh, obviously if you're going to run this in a browser you don't need Node. Um, the next thing you would need to do is npm install EOSJS uh, which since I already have it it's going to essentially tell me you don't need to do anything so I already have EOSJS. Um, so, so the next thing, so essentially I, I don't know let's just dive right into it. And uh, a lot of this you can find in the, oh, it looks like I have it open already, so I won't bother. Uh, a lot of this you can find in the OSJS GitHub uh, documentation. It's just a matter of like trial and error and making sure things work. That's kind of all I did for this tutorial. So essentially we're uh, importing the OSJS. Here I have set up a couple of constants that I'm going to use throughout this little demo of interacting with address book. Oh, uh, sorry, I just realized. The reason I even brought up this HTTP endpoint is uh, uh, EOSJS allows you to make any of these same calls, right? So, so the first thing I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you that you can do uh, EOS get block, and you can get the first block. So if I run, uh, come on, if I run um, node address book.js, you can see I'm actually getting the first block not getting the first block. Why am I not getting the first block? Because I killed Nodios. Okay, so let's run Nodios. Let's get Nodios running again. So I have something to hit. Uh, so now you know what it looks like if you're not running Nodios. <laughs> you try and hit the endpoint. Uh, lots of error messaging. Okay, if I run this again after Nodios gets spun up, we should uh, actually see the block, the data for the first block that got produced in the console. And as expected, we do. You can see the timestamp, uh, all that other stuff. It's been confirmed. Uh, the si producer signature, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, so essentially, what I'm as I said is. Uh, any any of these API endpoints, you know, you should have uh, the same equivalent method call in um, EOSJS. In this case, it's get block that I called here, and I pass in the block that I want to get. 
Uh, it's exactly the same here. Get block, you pass in the block number that you wanted to get. So um, let's uh, move on to something a bit more advanced. Uh, that's good to know, obviously, and uh, you can actually do a lot with that, with the ability to, you know, uh, uh, hit. This data getting served up is immensely useful if you're going to do any sort of front end development. Uh, one thing I did want to show you is uh, in the EOSJS documentation, you can change the HTTP endpoint. So if you wanted to point it at a testnet or at a mainnet block producer, I know uh, NS James is running uh, like a like a load balancer, so you can just hit his HTTP endpoint and it will load balance across all 21 of the block producers who are currently producing blocks. Uh, so so that's uh, the way you would configure that is just you know passing it in as part of the constructor up here all I'm doing is passing the key provider so it defaults to localhost which is fine by me because I'm running uh, Node.js locally. So the next thing we'd want to do is uh, interact with the hello contract so that, uh, we need to go through all the steps we went through before where we create the hello account and deploy to it so in this case I'm going to create hello uh, I need to unlock the wallet first because I restarted Nodios. And now we'll create the account and then uh, deploy the contract using Comptract. <clears throat> and after this finishes, we should be able to run Node again. about pushing a transaction. Why are we getting an error? Oh, because I haven't created the Alice account. So that's another thing. Uh, I've been using Alice as the test account as usual. Uh, I forgot to create that account. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And then again, if we run this, we should see... Uh, actually, we won't see much in, in Node.js, but we will see in Nodios as we're producing blocks that we got console output, um, we said hello Alice, welcome to the address book, which is what we have printed out here in the hello contract. So uh, very much the same as you know doing a push transaction as we were doing previously. I uh, would have pushed the action um, hel or, uh, hello and then hi and then Alice with the permissions of Alice. In this case we can do that via EOSJS. Um, and truthfully, you know, if I was going to do any sort of full stack smart contract development, I would not be using uh, Kleos at all. I would be doing all of this via EOSJS because even while I was testing it, to be honest, because um, because this is what you're going to you, eventually you're going to want to build a UI for users to use, right? So I would be testing and making sure that you know everything was going well for, with that rather than uh, in Kleos. Although you know you know really it's exactly the same thing. So uh, just to show you one more little tidbit, if you um, if I if we again de deploy the uh, address book smart contract, so let's create that account really quickly, and uh, then deploy it. We should then um, be able to uh, place Alice inside the database in very much the same way. So this is how you would do that. Uh, oh, I, I guess we could back up slightly and uh, talk about the syntax here. Uh, so the EOS object that we're creating here in uh, Node.js, Node you know, after we pass the constructor our key provider. Um, right here has a so it it had the get block right as expected it has all the http endpoint uh, methods you can run but here in the eos it also has a contract um, and in this case i was getting the hello contract right which is the one we deployed we created that account you watch me create the account you watch me deploy the contract and here i'm just calling that that returns a promise um, which you in JavaScript you can do dot then on and uh, that will return you this hello contract object from here the hello contract object has all the actions so any of the actions you want to enact on that hello contract in this case the only action we have right is high um, so I'm passing it's it, at this point it's you know it's essentially the same as doing push action right it's like Cleos push action the hello contract the high action and then in here we're passing the uh, 
the parameters that we're going to use in that contract. In this case, it was Alice, the string Alice, um, and then we had to put here. I have to pass act options because the the uh, blockchain will complain if there's no permissions given, right? So I'm I'm authorizing it with the permissions of Alice's active key, which I was able to get because I have this key provider up here. Um, and then here I was just printing out the response that was returned back from the the uh, blockchain. Uh, you know, after it ex successfully executed, here I can get different things like associated with that uh, to include the you know CPU usage and net usage that happened uh, during that transaction. So uh, if we move on to like a more advanced example, right? Hello world is fairly trivial. We move in on to a more exa advanced example. It's got you know roughly the same syntax here. Rather than getting the hello contract, I'm getting the address book. I get the address book contract address inside the promise. Um, here I'm creating the user. So, so th this is what will be passed as the parameters here, very similar to the push action we were doing previously. If we uh, look here, right, I was doing a push action add. Uh, so in this case, uh, same, very similar, right? We want to add, but rather than you know having to go through and create that on the command line using this you know array of parameters, instead I'm uh, instead I'm using a JSON object and filling in those parameters and then just passing the JSON object in. Again, we're using this options in order to sign the transaction, and then very similarly we're getting the response. So uh, if I have already deployed the contract, okay, sweet. So uh, now all we need to do is run node and we should get the same response meaning uh, that we did in fact store um, Alice in the the uh, address book smart contract so that's how you interact with the smart contracts um, so we wanted to see okay you know uh, did we really store this data in the smart contract right because I don't all I really have is this you know successful response you know, they, they could technically be sending me anything back so let's verify that we did in fact store Alice in the uh, address book database essentially if we run node we'll see that we were actually able to query so this this is very similar to the uh, get table command that we were running before in order to like get the the uh, the, the RAM database associated with this contract we're doing the same thing here with EOS uh, you'll you'll notice it's not running on the the dot contract. This is a, uh, a a function that's you know inherent to EOS. So we we run get table rows. Uh, we pass JSON equal true so that we can get this back as JSON right here. Um, it's very similar to the the get tables command over here. If we run get tables, uh, sorry get table, uh, we pass in the scope. That's what we're doing here. Sorry. So what we're doing here, we pass in the code, that's what we're doing here. In this case, they're both address book, address book. Um, and then finally, we're passing in the table that we want to get. In this case, it was the address table. Uh, again, this re returns a promise as the response object. Here, I'm printing out the rows. So, you know, how many, how many objects did we actually store in this database up to this point? We've only stored one. In this case, it was Alice, and we were able to see the, all of the Alice data that we had originally stored um, on the, in the database up here. So, um, let's actually uh, create this Bob just for illustration sake. Uh, sorry, I'm having a brain fart. Okay, so we created the uh, Bob Bob account, and let's uh, add the add Bob to the um, address book contract. Uh, as we can see, we got this response back, so we know it was successfully persisted. Um, and then, so so, what I was showing you again, if we run this again, what will we see? We'll actually see that there were two two. Um, now there are two um, objects in the database essentially, um, but where I'm only getting the first row of the database, um, and then printing that out, we're only going to see that first row. So if we change, whoops. So if we change that to let's say we want to get the first rather than zero. We run that, we should see Bob's data, and in fact, we do see Bob's data. Uh, so that's all well and good, but what if we don't want to return the whole set of rows in the database? Let's say maybe we're storing a whole lot of data, and this maybe will crash someone's browser or make it slower or something like that. We can actually run queries very similar to the way we were t when we talked about multi indexes uh, way, way back. 
um, the EOS IO multi indexes, you know, afford you exactly the same API. So here I can uh, run a lower bound query and an upper bound query and uh, only return, uh, let's say, one, one address. So, or sorry, one, yeah, address object in this case. So, uh, um, if we if we only want to get one object in our and pull that into memory, in this case we only want to get Alice. This is how we would do it. it it's very much the same thing. On top of adding the table parameters in the JSON, we're actually adding a limit parameter here, a lower bound parameter, parameter, and an upper bound parameter. And then uh, exactly the same way here, I'm uh, printing out all the data that gets returned. And we see here this time we only returned one rather than two. Uh, objects in the response and we did in fact get Alice this time rather than Bob. So uh, essentially that's EOSJS in a nutshell. You know, it, It's uh, very very useful I would say. Again like if I was going to do full stack development I would be focusing you know sp specifically on making sure my JS worked while I was doing smart contract development. It ties in you know a bunch of different things together. CLIOS, um, the HTTP endpoint API as well. Um, a couple other things that are you know really useful to know about and I, I didn't want to cover these in the video because I don't, I don't think that's the workflow I would use if I was running smart contract development but you can actually deploy smart contracts via this library as well which I think is very interesting but so uh, de anyway definitely check out this documentation do a deep dive on it get as much as you can out of it um, but if, if I was going to actually deploy the smart contracts I would do it exactly this exact same way we would do it I would deploy on the smart or sorry uh, via the command line, and then I would, you know, query the data, test the data while over here in JS land at the same time. Uh, okay, so I'll see you in the next video.